And here we go in a game that means everything to Minnesota. The puck is down, and here we go. Post behind your net to play that puck early. Kayla Kava cuts it off for Minnesota. New York, such an impressive and resilient win. Sophie Jakes now from up high. That tip just over the cage. And it just shows that on any given night, any team in this league can get a victory. Kendall Coyne, Schofield get it. They try the wraparound. Heisey was there. Couldn't get it to go. Some early pressure from Minnesota. Schofield, is, I think, has a huge ability to impact this game with her speed, with her hockey IQ, or smarts. She can create a lot of plays out of nothing, has been a real key component in the advancement of Heisey as a player all year. Right back to neutral ice, and now it's Elizabeth Jaguer in for New York. Jaguer cross ice for Rock, and her shot just over the cage and off the end boards. Love when a player takes the first shot on goal and it's high. Nothing better than putting one right by the ears in the first minute of a game, see if the goalie's awake. Nicole Hensley getting the start for Minnesota. Ken Klee has used a true tandem approach. Goalie rotation throughout between Hensley and Maddie Rooney, but Rooney got the start on Wednesday in a losing effort against Toronto, and now it's Hensley's cage. Ella Shelton leads the charge now for New York. Hands over to Carpenter. Carpenter off her back end to Shelton. Lost the handle on the puck. Tried to flip it back for Peyton Levis, but it comes all the way back into the New York zone. Good play by Shelton coming up ice. She was a little deception. Bought herself some time in the middle of the ice, and Shelton has been really creative over the last few games. Here's LaBelle streaking down the near side with speed. Centers. Cross ice right in front of Peyton Levis. Tried two shots, both of them turned aside by Hensley. Cole Hensley with a couple of good saves. And talking to Ken Clee throughout the entire course of the season, he's been really impressed with how well that she has held up and some of the big stops that she has made. Keeps rebounds in front of her. New York grabs a line with some speed. Good center ice kick out, dead angle shot to see if they can throw something off the goalie in front of the net. Get a couple of good kicks out of it. New York's been good in the crease the last couple of games. Yes, they have. Shot from distance blocked on the way. At least Shepard's there to disrupt that pass. Yeah, he called out Woods and Kayla Vespa as two players that just seem to make their line mates better no matter where you slot them in the lineup. Here comes Liz Shepherds in with speed, takes a shot and just went wide. Downey Landry, Kayla Vespa with her. Vespa flings it in off her backhand and gives chase. And that shot, Solnier couldn't quite get a handle on it. They go, they score! We're starting to run out of things to say about Jamie Bourbonnet, but once again, it's Savannah Norcross who makes a huge play along the wall to get this whole thing started, almost with like a screen check. And she scared her opponent into turning over the puck and having to make big contact. And Bourbonnet up top is able to find a seat. New York gets a puck into a good spot. Norcross, who helped create the third goal, the game winner, the other night against Ottawa with a good cycle and a good grind, does it again. And New York above the puck on a good low high play. Bourbonnet finds the twine. Jamie Bourbonnet with her fourth of the season. And a great start for New York early. Coin Schofield had it taken away. Brooke Hobson. Now Bourbonnet sends it ahead for Chloe Arard. Cut off at the center ice. Taylor Heisey gets it back. Jakes tries to play it deep. Heisey holds his own for Minnesota, but it comes out now, and Jakes will have to set things up once more at center ice. Heisey carries in. Kava back for Steckline, and her shot right on, gobbled up by Post. So New York scores. Minnesota puts his big line right back out there to get things going. A shot that was fanned on, and Bourbonnet was able to take the pass and throw it to the front of the net real quick, but it all started with really good down low work by Norcross and that line for the last couple of games, Vespa, Saulnier, Norcross has really generated a lot below the hash marks and below the goal line. That so-called fourth line for New York 
Howie Draper has rewarded their hard work with some extra minutes, and they've certainly taken advantage. They jam away along the boards. Puck comes loose for Sova. Out to the point for Sophie Jakes. Grace Zumwinkle checks behind her, looking for help along the boards. Krasova's there. But the puck comes out to neutralize. Steckline racing ahead to pick it up. Steckline fighting off Jaguar. And this is where I thought New York was really good against Ottawa. Ottawa with a good start, a couple of good chances off the rush early. And then New York started to pin their ears behind, you know, against the back of their heads real quick as their forecheck established. Kelly panning a shot that just went to the side of the net. Picked up by New York. Jaguar goes cross ice for Zandy Hart. Zandy Hart joining the rush. Centering pass to Bourbonnet and a glove save by Hensley. Bourbonnet catching up to it in the corner. Melissa Channel sends it deep for Minnesota. Back out it comes. No player in the league, in my opinion, as a defender makes more safe, smart, simple plays that matter than Melissa Channel. Wow. High praise. It, it, you watch her play, it, nothing nothing high frills, right? It, nothing sh flashy, nothing that makes your eyeballs pop out of your head and say, holy smokes. But when you go back and watch on, on the films, all you see is good headman passes or a puck into space or a puck out of trouble or a quick carry back to buy a little bit more room. It's just a safe, efficient, smart game, and you need those defenders. Channel originally drafted by Toronto, and they put her on waivers, and Minnesota happily picked her up. Now a big part of this decor. Buderak sends it back for Greco. She'll play it in for Minnesota. And so here today is the fifth straight opportunity for Minnesota to clinch a playoff spot with a single point. And trust me, the conversation in the dressing room was, Let's go out and lose an overtime just to get the point. Right? <laughs> I mean, this team wants a win in the worst way. Louis Arard has no stick. Kick saved by Post. Arard still without a stick. Sophie Jakes tries a shot that goes wide. Heisey back up high for Jakes. Jakes again right on for Post. Rebound comes out. Kick saved Post. New York goalie looking strong early in her first professional women's hockey league start. That shot from distance goes wide of the cage. Good shift by Minnesota. Taylor Heisey winds up and fires. Hit a body in front. Looked like it was Bourbonne who blocked that laser from Heisey and she's skating off in some discomfort. I wouldn't want to be on the other side of a Taylor Heisey shot. And Heisey, by the way, just went hard into the boards and is shaken up. Slap both knees right in the end boards. Minnesota Carpenter missed wide. Heisey skates to the bench in obvious discomfort. We'll certainly keep an eye on her. Bourbonnet takes one. Heisey takes a fall. Two key players. Here's Zumwinkle has Kelly Panic streaking toward the net. Zumwinkle takes a shot. Saved by Post. There's that, there's that power forward we talked about. Zumwinkle spins off. Great centering pass, and Post is there again. Some nastiness happening between Ella Shelton and Denisa Krizova. Getting set to drop the puck here at UBS Arena for the final time this season. Minnesota wins the faceoff, and Grace Zumwinkle has it behind the net. Goes low to high, a step line. Tried to get a tip, Krizova's tip goes wide. New York was eliminated last Sunday, but still playing for pride and future jobs, certainly. Zumwinkle cuts off the pass, and it's a three on two for Minnesota. Zumwinkle over to Panic. Panic takes a shot, fought off by Post. The one thing Ken Klee wants is when there's a grade A opportunity or even a good B opportunity, 
Take it. Don't worry about the pass. Take the shots, create some rebounds, go to the front of the net. It is amazing the high percentage of goals that get scored in this league on rebounds. Downey Landry streaking down the near side. She had a goal. In fact, it was her goal that sparked the offensive outburst from New York on Tuesday. In with speed comes Sophia Cunning. Makes a move to keep it alive. Fighting off a check from Ella Shelton. Low to high once more as Greco slides it across for Flaherty. Loose puck picked up momentarily by Fleming, but Brooke Hobson was there to sort it out for New York. Big part of Minnesota's offense being able to go low to high, utilize their points, who can really shoot the puck well. And you can see in the first 10 minutes, New York making a very concerted effort to defend from the inside and be in shot lanes. Here's Norcross in with speed, has Saulnier with her. Saulnier from the slot had it taken away by Cunnett. Norcross gets it back. Norcross. They ring it around the boards for Kayla Vespa at the side of the net. And a clear for Minnesota. They'll come all the way down the ice and go for icing. And we are so excited to welcome the inaugural playoffs in just a few days. Here's Jesse Eldridge, centering pass. Couldn't connect. Ella Shelton picks up the loose puck. She scores! It's 2-0 New York. Eldridge gets a puck down the wall. She tries to create in front. Nothing really happened. Then Shell just waited for a shot lane in traffic as Eldridge goes to the front of the net. And Eldridge has been really good in investing in front, taking away goalie's eyes. Hensley, for a second, was wondering if there was going to be a potential review for a high stick. I know the officials are talking about it now because you saw her try to mention or try to wave for it. But Shell did a really nice job of just waiting, waiting, waiting until the lane opened up and Eldridge was able to create the screen. And that, to me, was the key to the play. Eldridge made her pass left to right and then went right to the front of the net, standing there instead of admiring her play. She went to make a second play and was very effective in creating a screen in front. And now we will potentially get this taken a look at. Now remember, for the goal to count, if it hit a stick in front, the stick has to be underneath the crossbar. Did it hit the stick in front, though? I thought it was Shelton's goal. I don't know. It's tough to tell. It looked like it went just under the stick of Jesse Eldridge. And part of it is where does the where and how does the puck enter the net? Like if the puck is still on an upward trajectory, or trajectory, you obviously know it didn't hit anything on the way. And we are waiting the call from, well, the officials will make the call. The call is coming from Toronto, where they're discussing it. And let's see what we're gonna get here. I think, it's, I think it's good. We're gonna see what we got here. It's it good. is a good goal. Ella Shelton will get credit for her seventh of the season. Second straight game with a goal, and she had three points in Tuesday's 4-3 win. Minnesota wins the draw at center ice. Minnesota actually scored the first goal of the game last time out on Wednesday against Toronto, but then allowed four straight by Toronto to lose 4-1. Here comes Taylor Heisey. Heisey working in, has Coyne Schofield who gets shoved to the ground by Bourbonnet. Good to see both Heisey and Bourbonnet back on the ice after taking big time hits earlier this game. Jakes has it taken away by Hobson. Abby Rock trying to dig it out along the boards. At least step line there to disrupt it. And a shot for LaBelle right on, gloved and held by Hensley. What a start for the home team. Two goals for New York, and they lead it midway through the first.
Back in New York is June Upney, New York. Head coach Ken Klee of Minnesota joins me. Ken, your team is as good as any in the league at creating havoc off the four check and making things happen in the offensive zone. How can you get that done with the way New York's playing right now? Yeah, we just got to stay with our, our system and our structure. You know, we need to get pucks to the net. We need to get six on puck. And uh, obviously, we've had two turnovers on our own end that ended up in the back of our net. So we need to make sure you know we're a little bit sharper, get pucks to the net. There's a lot of game left. So I'm really uh, I'm excited about our group here. We'll be OK. Coach, thanks. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. You gotta love the positivity. On the flip side, everyone on that Minnesota bench is painfully aware of the fact that they have scored just five goals over this four game losing streak. And they'll try to come back from an early two nothing deficit here. They had chances against Toronto. I mean, they, they created 13 scoring chances, five grade A's, seven B's, one C. They had some really good looks, and a lot of it came off the forecheck. Heavy hit laid by Sophie Jakes. Taylor Baker quickly sends it up ice for New York. Cut off by Zumwinkle. They battle at the blue line. New York will flip it in. And you know, Minnesota has actually had its way with New York several times this season. Today is the fifth of five meetings between these two. Minnesota has won three of four. Jill Saulnier digs it out. Jake's again a heavy hit. She's a physical player and a force to be reckoned with out there. That was a big time hit too. That was perfect. Here comes Heisey, gains the zone, slings it across the ice for Kava. Kava, Queens Goldfield and a glove save by Post. Nice looking play by Minnesota with really nice timing and spacing as they they gain the line, then they change the pace, and Gaba pulls up, finds Schofield coming in late as the third forward, and Schofield smartly tries to go across the grain, seeing if she can get Post leaning towards the right. Post holds her ground, big glove save. Back for Greco, deflection just wide. Minnesota trying to create chances. They're getting bodies in front, but deflections are going wide of the net, and Post has been perfect so far. A couple of big rebounds early, but she's really settled in. Clarity unable to hold. Colonia Rard streaking ahead for New York. And McGreco sends it up the ice now for Minnesota. And Lindsay Post, the Quebec native, 30 years old, as I mentioned earlier, came on in relief of Abigail Levy on Sunday. That was her first appearance in the PWHL. Today, her first start. Played for Howie Draper at the university level, University of Alberta, won a championship for him in 2016. 2017, and she was the MVP of that tournament. Did I get my sixes and my sevens wrong? I think Howie thought it was 16. <laughs> he told us 16, we looked it up, it was 17. Either okay. way. So I heard, it, so I heard it correctly, right? Okay. You heard it from Howie 16, <laughs> right. but that's a long time. Somehow it's 2024 already. <laughs> hey, so. No kidding. Either way, she ended up playing the last four seasons in Sweden and was named the goalie of the year. Here comes a chance for Minnesota off the side of the net. They get it back. Try the front for Bryant was there swarming. It doesn't matter who they're playing, they gotta go play. And so far, New York's had the better of it. Here's Zumwinkle, centering pass for Panic in front, they score! Danisa Krizova has cut the lead in half. Minnesota wins a draw. They're the best team in the league at winning draws and getting chances right after it, and here they get one. They have a really good plan to get a puck back after it goes down low. Good chase. Krishova plants herself in front of the net, and Minnesota goes to work down low. We just asked Ken Klee, your team is as good as any at being at creating havoc in the offensive zone off a four check. That's a situation we call it a 15-foot four check. Minnesota goes to work quick win a puck, get it right to the front of the net, and get it in. Krizova, a big part of Team Czechia internationally, a two-time bronze medalist there. Also played at Northeastern with Kendall Coyne Schofield. Couldn't have picked a better time to try to open the floodgates for Minnesota offensively. Back they come, three on two if they hurry. Kelly Panic gains the zone. 
Hook binder is streaking toward the net. She goes back for Krasova. Zumwinkle has it taken away momentarily. Gets the puck back. Zumwinkle down low. Zumwinkle over to Channel. Channel rings it around the boards before going for a change. And Downey Landry takes it away. Five minutes and change to go here in the opening frame. A busy first period for both sides. Jill Saulnier holds his own for New York. Saulnier makes a move, but we have a whistle. The chase for the championship begins on Wednesday. Toronto will host its first game on Wednesday at Coca-Cola Coliseum. They will have their pick between the third and fourth seeds in the playoffs as to who they will face in the first round. We'll have more on that in a bit. Second consecutive faceoff Minnesota's taken when they try to work a tap ahead. This one worked for them. Saulnier carries through center ice and brings it around the boards. Heisey with speed. Gains the zone for Minnesota. Fights off Ella Shelton, then feeds stack line at the point. Across for Jakes. Jakes a chance right into the breadbasket of Lindsay Post. Minnesota's goal a moment ago. Watching the inside, 13 in white. Off the draw, it's a bit of a scramble, but Sunwinkle went right in for it, thinking it might have been tapped forward. So she was in great space, in great position when that puck came below the goal line to make a play. She burst right through, thinking that that puck was going to get tapped forward. Minnesota won the draw. Comes back for Jakes. Across her stack line, lost a handle on it. Brings it around the boards down low. Minnesota trying to snap a four-game losing streak. Have not won since the international break. Stack line, a chance that goes wide the net. And if you're tracking, that can go almost back to March. Right. <laughs> The international break took about three weeks or so. Several star players from Minnesota representing Team USA. Getting a silver medal as Zumwinkle tried to wind up and fire it. Good defensive play by Chloe Erard. And by the way, congratulations to USA Hockey, their staff on a tremendous job, hospitality-wise and organizationally-wise, in hosting the Women's World Championships in Utica, New York, and the city also doing a really nice job of hosting the tournament. Canada beat Team USA for the gold medal. Seems to always come down to those two teams. Well, it's all about growing the game, right? Here First in the foremost. U.S., in Canada, and certainly across the world. Alex Carpenter wins the draw. Quick shot by Jaguar was blocked in front by Channel. Still loose. Hensley had to make a save in there somewhere. Lots of traffic in front. That shot goes behind the net. Picked up by Carpenter and sent up high to the point for Bourbonnet. Now Shelton had it blocked by Brooke Bryant. Melissa Channel comes away with a loose puck and leads the charge now for Minnesota. Minnesota looking for the equalizer. Bryant sends it in before going to the bench for a change. Some fresh legs on the ice now for Minnesota. Carpenter. They like New York getting their top D pair out against Minnesota's fourth line, trying to create some offense from up top. Downey Landry will send it in for Minnesota as Hensley's behind her net to play it. Final two minutes of this first period. Flaherty hit the side of her own net, trying to pass it across to her D partner. Back comes Minnesota, in with speed as Kendall coins Schofield. Coins Schofield looking for a lane to pass to Cava. Disrupted by New York. And a heavy hit laid by Emma Greco. My goodness, two on one for New York. Levis couldn't catch up to the pass. Kendall coins Schofield was there to break it up. Back for Zandy Hart off the glass. Loose puck in front, Hensley doesn't see it. And a break for Minnesota. Oh, Donnie Lange almost cue balled one in from behind the net. Here's Alex Carpenter, makes a move, a shot right on, saved by Hensley. Furious pays here to finish out this first period. From the early part of the second period against Ottawa to now, this might be the three best periods New York has put together in a row in a while. They look loose, they look like they're playing free, and they are playing great. Now a chance for Zumwinkle. Zumwinkle checks behind her. 
crunched along the boards as Krizova picks up the loose puck. Here's Panic, tried the short side, it was sealed off by Post. Jaguar now plays it ahead as Steckline races to catch up to it. Minnesota's got speed, trying to flash it here. Kelly Panic into the corner. 40 seconds to go, pack and forth they go. Jake's the stretch pass for Panic as Zumwinkle was in offside. A wild scramble down by the Minnesota goal. They avoid disaster. Quickly, left side of the screen. Henley not sure where this puck is, and it is just bouncing loose and floating around. It hits her skate and winds up off to the side of the net. But Downey Landry did a great job of being behind the net, catching a loose puck, seeing Hensley out of position and out of sorts, and just try to bank it off her back and into the net. It has to be the most unsettling feeling as a goaltender, knowing the puck is loose. It went off her shoulder, but she didn't know where it was, and you saw her just kind of freeze in case she were to bat it in accidentally. All you want to make sure is you don't know where it is, and you're hearing people talking, yelling, screaming. You just don't want to hear cheering, because that's when you know the chase is over. Sophia Conan took a heavy hit by Emma Woods. The stack line content to let the time wind down on period one. But my goodness, that was a heck of a first period. Back here at UBS Arena, where New York leads Minnesota 2-1 after one. We're joined by the goal scorer for Minnesota, Denisa Krizova. Denisa, after you guys let them score the first two goals, what was the message in order to get back in this game? You know, just keeping focusing on our game. We want to get the pucks on the net, get the rebounds, and uh, yeah, still focus on us and get the pucks on net. Do you like the way that you're getting to the net and getting on with some of those loose rebounds? I mean, yeah, the, someone someone has to do it, obviously, and, and that's what we want. Like, she, uh, she's doing lots of rebounds. We want to get there and put the pucks in net. How important is it for you as this game goes on to be able to control the neutral zone so that you can create some speed coming in? I mean, yeah, the neutral zone is a huge piece, obviously. We got to get better in our transition and get faster to their own zone and uh, create chances. Thanks so much for the time. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Minnesota trying to keep coming in waves and fight back into this game. Kendall Coyne Schofield has Cava right in front of the net, couldn't handle the pass. Sends it up high and it's cut off by Eldridge. Bowie Arard in with speed. As Taylor Heisey told us before the game, we know we don't want to start squeezing our sticks too tightly. We got to try to play loose, have fun. And the point Schofield throws it right in front, nobody home. Picked up by Jaguar. Trick for Minnesota right now is make New York start to make the mistakes. I mean, Rock throws one on net, kicked out by Hensley. Another shot, just hit the side. Urbanet holds for New York, rings it around the boards for Rock behind the net. Rock is taken down, no whistle. Here comes Minnesota. Zumwinkle across her coin, Schofield. She sends it in. Bookbinder a chance that sails just wide. Some sustained ozone time for Minnesota here. Cut off by Krizova. Turnover in front, Bourbonnet. Sorts it out for New York. Now Carpenter plays it ahead for Jaguar. Jaguar is one of those players, Howie Draper has told us, he's seen the most improvement in throughout the course of the season. He mentioned her by name and Chloe Arard as two of the women who he's really seen progress. And that's, that's what it's all about, right? Not only having a good season, one that, you know, they didn't end up making the playoffs, but something to build on for next year, whether it be here or somewhere else in free agency. These women are playing for jobs. No question. And the job of the coach, obviously, we're in a results-oriented business at the pro level. So the job of the coach is, is win. But part two of that is make your players better. And he's done a pretty good job with a good chunk of this team. Absolutely. They jam away at it along the boards. Sprung free eventually by Krizova, but New York takes it right back. Alex LaBelle. And as frustrating a season as it has been at times for New York, really impressive the way that they fought back after going down 2-0 
after the first period against Ottawa. Scored four straight and won that game in regulation. Now a strong start here today as well. Here comes Cunning. Cunning gains the zone, has speed, goes skate to stick, and shot it just wide of the cage. She's got a great stride, Cunning does, and it just gets faster and faster with the power that she put into it. It's really efficient, and you can just see the way that she can gain steam and gain momentum as she keeps chugging. Here's Hobson, top of the slot, deflects up and out of. It's, it's always a team effort, as we both know. Zandy Hart's shot. Looking for a tip, but it goes wide. Norcross tries to center. That shot wide. Another chance right in front. Hensley's loose, and it looked like it went in. They wave it off immediately. And now we'll get a whistle and a closer look. Looks like we're also going to get a penalty. But my goodness, a game of inches. That puck nearly found the back of the net. Boy, New York on a couple of occasions couldn't have gotten any closer. And here's another good foray to the front of the net. Shepard is going to get the penalty for the hook. New York wins a little bit of a battle here. And as it goes behind the net, they try to bank play again. And there's the hook you see in front of Norcross. Pings went off the post. Good job by New York to gain possession. Vespa gets it out in front into the danger zone where her teammates can go to work. And Shepard is forced to take a penalty to help prevent a goal. Off the pipe. New York will settle for a power play. New York lethal on the power play this season. Number two, only to Ottawa. This power play brought to you by Royal Tiger Towel. Power through tough messes. Abby Rock right in front, had a chance. Sent it just wide. Eldridge. Picks up the puck, gets it over to Rock. They'll set up once more. Back to the point for Shelton. Slings it across for Bourbonnet. Back to Shelton. Shelton already a goal in this game. Same with Jamie Bourbonnet. Shelton. Bourbonnet winds up and fires and scores! spread out the zone and the one timer deflected on its way in. And New York is able to score. This thing hit the back post or the side post and went in the far side. But the key was the release by Bourbonnet right off the pass from Shelton. Carpenter moved it quick, station to station. Hash marks, right point, left point, and before anybody can get set or get into a shot lane, Bourbonnet let it fly and New York Leads it three to one. We're looking at the official scores booth just to make sure that there is nothing that's gonna get taken a look at. And that is the delay that you are seeing at the moment. They're just making sure the goal is good. New York's power play over the last few games is operating at about 25%. Minnesota's PK over its last six games is at 50%. That is a bad matchup for Minnesota. Yeah, Ken Klee telling us for some reason, we just cannot prevent teams from scoring on the power play. Wow, a heavy hit laid by Jesse Eldridge on Heisey, and she is shaken up, slow to get up. And it'll be two minutes for tripping. So just the two minute power play, what do you think? I think that New York has dodged a major bullet here because to me, that's got a lot of the grounds to be a major for Nying. Wow. It is incumbent upon the player delivering the hit. A, if the player doesn't have the puck or has moved it, and it's a couple of seconds after at the very least, you can't follow through on the hit. You can bump, but you can't do that. So Minnesota will go to work on the power play, trying to answer the power play goal scored by New York just moments ago. You mentioned it, it's been a struggle lately on both sides of the special teams battle for Minnesota. Looking at just 8.8% .8 on the power play coming into today. Jakes plays it over to Kava. Cross for Zumwinkle. Zumwinkle up to Jakes. Jakes at the point had it blocked on the way. Now Zumwinkle from the left circle. And that blocked by Ella Shelton. 
Zumwinkle gets it back, down low for Shepherds. Zumwinkle up high for Jakes. Over to Kava. Kava, the shot saved by Post. Kava again. Spins off. Back to the point for Jakes. One timer and a pad saved by Post. Jakes again. Over to Kava. Kava in the spot for Coins Schofield. It's loose in front. Another save for Lindsay Post. Zumwinkle back for Jakes. Winds up and fires. It was blocked on the way by LaBelle. Zumwinkle scanning. Feeds Kava. Zumwinkle a one-timer. Blocked again. Now Kava with a loose puck right in front. Tried to feed the slot. Nobody home and what? A penalty killing effort by some of these New York players. Right back in comes Minnesota. Coin Schofield centers. Zumwinkle gets it back. A lengthy shift for these Minnesota power play players. Coin Schofield stops up. Heisey back on the ice. Great sign. Heisey from the left circle. Winds up. Feeds down low, Kelly Panic sealed off by Post. <laughs> Penalty over, Eldridge out of the box. Lee Steckline takes over. Tremendous kill by New York. Minnesota still has it in the zone. Again, Taylor Heisey is back on the ice after going down the tunnel. And it comes free. What a lengthy shift for some of those defenders for New York. And in my opinion, a real momentum gaining penalty kill for New York. They were in shot lanes. They were good by the net. They didn't allow Minnesota to do what they wanted. Jay Downey Landry now passes across and a save by Hensley. Back here at UBS Arena on Long Island for what is the final game of this regular season for both Minnesota and New York. New York just playing for pride at this point and playing for each other. They win the draw back for Downey Landry and skips ahead into the corner. I liked what Howie Draper had to say about this close-knit group and how at this point of the season, they know that time is winding down and you know, not everything's going to be the same next year. So they want to go out on a high note and play for each other. And I tell you what, there's probably some people in that room that wish this season had five more games. Centering pass right in front, Hensley, a brick wall, puck is still loose. They search for it as Minnesota players jam away, still loose. How many chances did New York have? Somehow Minnesota able to come away with the puck. If you're Minnesota, you got to take that as a good sign from the hockey gods that you didn't get scored on there and you, you just got a second chance to get back into this game. Downey Landry gains his own, but they're in offside. And in a season that has been full of disappointment and missed opportunities for New York, the real silver lining has been their special teams play. Both penalty kill and power play rank second best in the league. They've been a good face-off team, so that establishes possession. They've been a good face-off team on the power play, that's for sure. And even killing penalties, they've been able to win some first draws and get some clears. Well, they're perfect on the power play so far and perfect on the penalty kill here today. Bourbonnet on hat trick watch now. Sends it over to Ella Shelton at the point. For Eldridge. Eldridge over to Shelton. And a quick clear for Minnesota. That first power play unit for New York is just built for success. Between Bourbonnet and Shelton, you got a righty and a lefty up top. Both can one time it and both can create. Carpenter is really good on either flank. And you got Eldridge and Rock. They can do a lot of heavy lifting. Bill Saulnier gains speed, carries in. Bookbinder disrupts the play. Downey Landry gets it back, makes a move, she scores! What a beauty by Jane Downey Landry. She's been on fire lately. What a shot. New York on the walls. They seal with a battle. Downey Landry comes off quick and another example. Don't dust it, don't play with it a whole lot. Get it to the front of the net as fast as you can. 
And she talked about how her team and what they're doing lately, and this was just a great quote after their last game. Few rough patches, but I think that win puts it in perspective for it. And look at what they're doing today, playing with a ton of confidence, and boy, did they generate a great chance off the wall by being above putts. Another power play goal for New York. Gives them a four to one lead here just before the midway point of this game. And I loved what you just said a few minutes ago. If you're New York, you wish you had five more games. Krizova tries to carry in for Minnesota, fighting through a check and unable to do so. Just remember that loss to Montreal, they played pretty well. Steckline in the pad save by Post. Here's Kelly Panic on the short side, had it deflected behind the net. Sophie Jakes trying to find the loose puck. Ella Shelton does instead. Shelton deflects it off the end boards, gets it back, turns it up ahead. We've seen flashes of absolute brilliance and skill from this New York squad. Abby Rock now tries to make a move off her backhand. Couldn't get a shot off. Point Schofield streaking down the far side in with speed. Takes a shot saved by Post. Welcome back to New York where they have opened up a 4-1 lead here in the second period. Coach Howie Draper joins me. You've got the look of a kid in the candy store right now. Your team's playing real well. What's it doing through your eyes that's allowed them to take a 4-1 lead? Well, I just think we decided to turn up our level where the puck's moving really well for us, our feet are moving. The kill that we just uh, were able to put into effect is outstanding. I mean, we have players diving in front of pucks to, to sacrifice themselves basically for pride. So, uh, so we're playing for a lot right now. Coach, thanks for everything. Good luck the rest of the way. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, an offensive clinic these past couple of games. Alex Carpenter carrying in, and you know, that's despite Alex Carpenter, who's arguably their best player. It's despite her being on a 12-game goal drought. She is producing in that time frame, had, I believe, eight assists in those 12 games, and now has one here today. But if you told me that they'd be scoring eight goals in two games and Carpenter wouldn't have a single one of them, I'm not sure I would have believed you at the start of the season. How about this? from Stu, our wonderful statistician. New York leads the PWHL with 13 goals by defensemen. Obviously the three today are factored into that, but the next closest team is Boston with nine. A two on one, now Jaguar and a save by Hensley. Back comes Minnesota as Zumwinkle has panic with her. Zumwinkle's chance fought off by Post. Panic slings it out for Bookbinder. It deflects up. Flaherty back across now for Bookbinder. Bookbinder looking for a tip. Bouncing buck on the way, scooped up by Bourbonnet. She takes a heavy hit along the boards. Kelly Panic picks it up, drives right down Broadway, and a save made by Post. Rebound is loose. Puck still loose in the crease. Trying to get a shot off his Minnesota, but eventually Post finds it. Colleen Schofield feeds Heisey. Cava right in front, turned aside by Post. Cava slings it up high for Steckline. Steckline from distance, looking for a tip. It goes wide. Heisey gets it back. That deflected off Peyton Levis and out to the neutral zone. Under seven to play here in the middle frame, a 4-1 lead for the home team. They played spoiler against Ottawa on Tuesday night. Looking to do so again here against Minnesota today. Bookbinder able to hold the zone for Minnesota, sends it, but it goes off the skates of Liz Shepard. Alex LaBelle racing ahead now for New York. Bookbinder picks it up. Oh. Minnesota has not won since oh. the international break. Several of its stars, including their goalie, Nicole Hensley, a big part of Team USA's roster. 
They, they went into that break on a five game heater. They won five in a row, and now they're potentially looking at losing five in a row. Claire DeGeorge catching up to it, sends it back. Flaherty sends one, blocked on the way. It ends up going into the glove of Post. What an effort by the New York goalie. We'll be right back. Goosebumps as the inaugural PWHL playoffs begin on Wednesday. Toronto hosting a team to be determined. They'll host games Wednesday and Friday. Montreal will host the other semifinal series Thursday and Saturday. It's a best of five series. A chance in front. Grace Zumwinkle couldn't handle the pass. Now it comes out for Elizabeth Jaguer. Jaguer across her Carpenter. Carpenter and a save by Hensley. Hensley deep on that last shot. Tough go of it today for this Minnesota squad. Here's Carpenter in all alone in a strong save by her Team USA teammate, Nicole Hensley. Carpenter still searching for it. Has it taken away by Panic. Panic. Tried to play it ahead. Instead, New York able to hold the zone and Norcross has it down low. She's tripped up. No call. Panic up to Zumwinkle. Krizova enters the zone for Minnesota. Zumwinkle scoops it up and plays it down low for Krizova. Krizova looking for a lane. Now to Kava. Loose puck picked up by Saulnier. Saulnier makes a little move. Hands it across for Hobson. Point Schofield relentless on the forecheck. Creates a turnover. Heisey a chance saved by Post. Post just bailed out. Both of her, the wingers for New York, both New York's wingers flew the zone really early when Saldane picked up the puck. And when it got turned over, there was nobody home. Here comes a couple of good chances by New York. Here's the wrist shot I talked about. Hensley playing a little deep on that one. She was almost sitting on the goal line here. Then on the breakaway chance, or the one on goal chance here, much better aggressive depth and a nice stop here to keep Minnesota in the game. Minnesota wins the draw. Quinn Schofield pass disrupted by Chloe Arard. Now I know if you're New York, you want to keep pushing the pace, keep stretching the rink, but you got to be careful here. Don't make the mistake that allows Minnesota to get the softy that all of a sudden turns their engine on. Here's Emma Woods, gains his own for New York. Chloe Arard taken down. Zambi Hart settles it down at center ice and sends it back in. Under four to play here in the middle frame. One that's been dominated by the home team. Two goals in this second period. And two goals on the day for Jamie Bourbonnet. Bourbonnet had three goals on the season. Ella Shelton had three points on Tuesday night against Ottawa. Now with a couple more here so far today, she leads all PWHL defenders with 20 points. And some heavy minutes too. She is almost always on the ice. And there she is working in now on Lee Steckline. Another player, a lot of heavy minutes, mm -hmm. Steckline. New York trying to break something free. Instead, Sophia Cunning sends it back to set line. LaBelle keeps the shift alive for New York. Some fresh legs on the ice, including Abby Rock, who goes to work down low. Set line takes it away. Two and a half to play here in this second period. Shots are just about even, but that shows you how great a job Lindsay Post has done in her first PWHL start. Oh, Minnesota just a little sloppy change there. Just got away with one for having too many. Zandy Hart tries to play it ahead. Abby Rock banks it off the board to Alex Carpenter. Instead, Emma Greco is there to pick it up. Minnesota trying to fight through the mental fatigue that has come with this four game losing streak. Carpenter a chance just wide. Banked hard off the end boards and almost caused trouble for Hensley.
Zandy Hart tries to play it out for New York, held in by Flaherty. Now Abby Rock does clear the zone for New York, but icing the call. Now it's Carpenter, the two-time Olympian, six-time world champ gold medalist. Stacked resume, actually had a hat trick in this year's women's world championship. Now producing at the highest level in the PWHL. She'll send it in before going to the bench for a change. Final minute here in the second period at UBS Arena. Coin Schofield passes ahead for Cava. Taylor Heisey picks up the puck, working in, takes a shot, it goes behind the net. And another clear for New York. New York doing a good job of not allowing anything from Minnesota. Hardly allowing them to set up for any sustained ozone time. Impressive effort, despite being eliminated from playoff contention a few games ago. Yeah, conceivably, these could be the two teams on the outside looking in when all is said and done, and I don't think you would have thought that as January and February rolled along. Well, look, we will never forget that first ever PWHL game between New York and Toronto when New York came away with a shutout win. And Toronto could get out of their own way for four or five games, and they they stabilized it. They stayed with the process in New York. We had a pretty good results early on, then it got away from them a little bit, and, and they're getting it back late. And like I said, even though they lost to Montreal before they beat Ottawa, they were pretty good in Montreal, and Anne-Marie Davian was terrific. Heavy hit right at center ice. Saulnier is shaken up and slow to get up. Still on her knees as the horn sounds on the second period. What an effort from New York. Back here at UBS Arena where the home team leads Minnesota 4-1. After two, we're joined by New York defender Jamie Bernay, who has a pair of goals on the afternoon. Jamie, what's working so well for you guys on the power play? trying to get pucks to net. Um, obviously my goal wasn't super pretty, but I think it's just a shot that, you know, Hensley couldn't see there. So um, I think just, you know, working it around and getting it on net and good things will happen. There's an old expression, you got to do the gritty before you can do the pretty. And in the last three games, your team has done a lot of a heavy lifting down low, working well on the walls. What have you seen from your group in that area that's produced some offense? Yeah, I think that our four track has been great tonight. Um, and it's super good to see that our team's still battling. You know, it's tough to play in these games when you know that you're already out, but I'm really proud of this group for, for battling hard tonight. What are you doing period number three to wrap this thing up? I think just similar to what we've been doing, I don't want to change anything. Um, I think we've been putting a ton of pressure on them, so I just continue to do that and finish hard. Thanks so much for the time. Good luck in the third. Thanks so much. The first time we've seen a number three goalie start a game in the PWHL this season. Now for Minnesota, you're almost in an overtime mentality right now. There's no shot, no such thing as a bad shot for them right now. They now to funnel pucks to the net, funnel bodies to the net, and they're gonna have to open it up just a bit and turn this game into a track beat. Sophie Jakes gains the zone now for Minnesota. Goes across for Kava. Kava back for Heisey. Lee Steckline makes a move. Another one as well, driving toward the net. Disrupted by Abby Rock and taken away by Hobson. New York sends it in, goes for a partial change. Kelly Panic up ahead now for Krizova. Krizova back for Panic. Panic over to Zumwinkle, couldn't handle the pass. And that's the kind of play that was working so well for Minnesota earlier this season. They've created some really nice rushes. They've utilized space. They just haven't been able to finish here today. Bookbinder picks it up, throws it on net, but both saw it all the way. Couple good early rushes by Minnesota, including this one. They get the puck settled down, and then as it goes across, Zumwinkle, when she receives, it's rolling on her, and it hits the left skate, and she just can't corral it. Sheffers in shorthanded to George with her, and remember, if you're a newer fan of the PWHL, you should know that there's a very interesting rule called the jailbreak, in which if a team scores shorthanded, the penalty is over. 
Minnesota trying to do just that here. There to George, she couldn't handle the puck. It comes out to neutral ice. Right back in comes Kelly Panic in shorthand and has it off her backhand, trying to keep it alive. It's right in front of the score! A jailbreak goal for Minnesota. It's Grace Zumwinkle burying the puck that was just sitting on the goal line. That was a lot of grit and determination by Minnesota. This is a great work ethic goal. Panic drives the net and stays with it. She doesn't fly by here. She stops. They know they got the goalie in a pro position. And Zumwinkle attacks the crease with some vengeance. Look at the puck laying around there. And Panic just tries to keep driving her stick, driving her stick. And Zumwinkle, right at, Zumwinkle was around the top of the circle. So when she realized that there was going to be a play to the net, she put the afterburners on and went. So she red waited, red waited. Saw that there was going to be daylight, and she attacked. But well, what a job by Panic to get the puck into a danger area where she can make a secondary play. And just like that, the penalty is over, thanks to the jailbreak goal by Grace Zumwinkle. Just a few minutes before that, she had a great look at a yawning cage, unable to bury there. But determination by Panic, followed up by the heads-up play of Grace Zumwinkle has given Minnesota life here in the early part of this third period. So here comes the net drive. Panic gets to the outside. She doesn't have a clean path to the net. It was a really good defensive play, I thought, by Eldridge to get her to go wide. But Post lost her post. And Zumwickle, off the good read, was able to come in and tap it home. And how about Kelly Panic getting just enough of that puck, poking it between the legs of Lindsay Post to put the puck in the blue paint. Well, there's somebody I wouldn't want to play pool with. Emma Woods with a chance saved by Hensley. The rebound comes out, but she stops it again. She got a couple things going on here. Number one is if you're Hensley, you know you can't give up another one. So I mean that, that solidifies. And if you're Minnesota, yeah, you get the shorty. So now you get some life. Howie Draper in the second period with us talked about how their penalty kill ignited some momentum for them, which yes. led to a couple of power play goals later. Let's see what this does for Minnesota. One of those pivotal moments when you're struggling so much on special teams, you get a great break like that. Anything can happen. Zumwinkle back on the ice now for Minnesota. Again, we're back to full strength. Bourbonnet chases it into her own zone. Here's the George, two on two if they hurry. Bryant, Bryant tried to go cross ice with it to Shepherds in the skates of New York and instead, Shepherds will chase it all the way back in their own zone. New York doing a really good job tracking back through the middle so that their trailer is picking up the trailer for Minnesota and not allowing that layered pass, that pass to the third forward to be one where that player has a really good look at the net. New York defensively, good job at taking away middle ice against the rush. Taylor Baker plays it ahead for LaBelle. New York goes for a change as Hobson sends it in. Hensley behind her own net to play it cut off by Saulnier, danger. And Minnesota able to come away with the puck. Hensley a little casual there behind her own net playing it and a good heads up play on the forecheck by Saulnier. Here's Heise, goes for a lap, hands off her Steckline. Steckline shot blocked by Shelton. It's that half a second you hold on to it that allowed that, allowed that shot lane to close and Steckline to not get that puck through. Steckline across for Jakes. Up ahead for Heisey. Taylor Heisey left this game momentarily in the second period after taking a heavy hit by Jesse Eldridge. We may get a penalty here. And we are going to. Delayed whistle coming. Jakes fans on the shot, gets it back. Over to Heisey. Heisey, top of the slot, shot just wide. Kava gets it back. Now Steckline. Tees up Jakes. Jakes looking to center, and the touch means a whistle. New York going to the box for a trip. Minnesota with a little bit of offensive pressure, and one of the fastest players. In the women's game, Kendall Coyne Schofield coming in wide. There you see the trip. No doubt about it. And now Minnesota will get an opportunity. They've got everybody with the bench. I don't think they call a timeout, but they 
are buying the extra time here for a little powwow before they get involved. They are better statistically in taking faceoffs on the left dot. And that's where they will start this power play. Minnesota 0 for 1 right now on the day. Just the one shot on net. Big opportunity here for them to get right back in this game. Zumwinkle from the goal line. Tried to center. Point Schofield was tied up. Heisey gets it back. Sends it down for Shepherds. Shepherds trades places with Heisey, then hands it off to her in the right circle. Cross ice for Zumwinkle. Jakes from up high. Heisey thought about a shot. Passes back for Jakes instead. Tees up Zumwinkle. It was blocked on the way. And Ellis Shelton is in pain after that. They have just been trying on two power plays now to get Zumwinkle in that spot on the half wall for the one timer on her off wing. And New York's contained it pretty well. So many block shots today from New York. The effort is unmatched. And another penalty coming. A big hit delivered by, I believe, Savannah Norcross. And the home crowd does not like it. Minnesota on the rush. Heisey with speed going wide. Brooke Hobson. Wow. And there's the penalty for an illegal check. Good hip to hip. We've seen some heavy hits today. That surprises me a bit. And Hobson, you can see her reaction and confusion. So, you know, you want to talk opportunity and one way to get your power play going? How about a five on three? And they managed to get the crew a little bit rested here as they got this whole thing sorted out. Kenny Klee got everybody to the wall to go through what they want. Now, where the five on three differs from a five on four, and a five on four, the points will be up high, close to the blue line like they would normally be in regular play. In a five on three, the trick is the faster you can get the puck down low, the faster you can bring your points in, and then really play it tight around the tops of the circles. They'll have 74 seconds on the five on three. Massive opportunity, but New York ends up coming away with the puck. Zandy Hart trying to tick away the... And Zumwinkle with a blast, but right on, and Post hangs on. And that's what I'm talking about. Watch, see the D creeping in. As soon as the puck gets low, the D can start to move in, and Zumwinkle, who is a defender in this situation, is standing right there on the tops of the circles who launched the one-timer. Leading goal scorer and point getter for this Minnesota squad just scored a shorty moments ago. New York trying to be heads up about number 13. Ella Shelton will send the deep and on goal. Zumwinkle leads the charge ahead for Minnesota. Five on three. Jakes across for Zumwinkle. Back for Jakes. They trade places. Zumwinkle. Looking to go down low with it. Krizova, back for Zumwinkle. Cross for Jakes, down low for Heisey. Back for Jakes. Zumwinkle, top of the slot. Down to Krizova. Over to Jakes. Jakes takes a shot, deflects off a body. It's loose in front. Kelly Panic tried to throw it off her backhand, and Zumwinkle a drive that's blocked by Shelton. Jakes keeps it alive. Over to Krizova. Back for Jakes. Zumwinkle has it in the left circle. Now Heisey back for Zumwinkle. Jakes, Krizova, blocked by Zandy Hart. Krizova trying to get it back. Heisey from the short side, sent it behind the net. Jakes gets it back. One penalty over. Back to five on four for another 35 seconds. Heisey. Thought about the shot, passes instead. Zumwinkle shot, fought off by Post. Jakes thought about a shot, gets it back. And the crowd showing its appreciation for these penalty killers. Here's Kelly Panic. Krizova back for Jakes. Jakes, Zumwinkles, first shot high and off the glass. When you're tired, that one time with accuracy is hard. And she just muscled it wide. New York back to full strength. How about that for a penalty kill? Here's Hobson, fresh out of the box, makes a move, takes it in, and a save!
We may get another penalty here at a five on three. New York kills it off, and now New York gets a power play. And they had buckets and buckets of chances. And I'll tell you what, Lindsey Post has been spectacular. Ella Shelton has been phenomenal. I'm wondering who's got more saves. Because Shelton has blocked a chunk of shots, <laughs> and a lot of them point blank, and two of them were on some Winkle one timers. You can add Bourbon into that list of shot blockers as well. This power play brought to you by Royale Tiger Towel. They work it down low, a dangerous power play that's already struck for two goals here today. Bourbonnet over to Shelton. She goes down low for Eldridge. Eldridge cross eyes. Abby Roy makes no mistake. This was really good execution. New York with good eyes up time. Rock is sneaking it from behind. By Carpenter going to the net, she drew Channel in. See 25 in green? So 25 in green's in front of the net. Carpenter, at that point, Channel, 23 in white, has got to engage. And when she engages, that's when Rock sleeps in behind her. And that is the beauty of the extra player is that backdoor play through the seam. And New York has worked out so well all year. Rock and Eldridge have had great chemistry and making that play happen. But it was Carpenter going to the front, forcing Channel to engage, then open up the back door for Rock to slide into. What a pretty pass by Jesse Eldridge. And Abby Rock was right on for the shot. That's her sixth of the season. This is the first time all year New York has scored five goals. And with four on Tuesday, make it nine and counting in two games for a team that had been averaging just two goals per game all season prior. Two goals a game in 22 games and then nine in the final two. And I'm telling you, they, they could have had six or seven in Montreal last week. And they played really, really well up there. And Davian was tremendous. You start to think about what might have been for New York if they had a little more runway. They will have more next year. Per the CBA, the PWHL schedule will go up to at least 30 games next season. And things could have gotten very interesting for New York down the stretch, the way they are playing if there were 30 games this season. Hobson a drive into the glove of Hensley. Taylor Baker spins off, hands over to Brooke Hobson. Oh! Lee Steckline carried behind her own net, sends it ahead now for Sydney Brock. Savannah Norcross tries to make a move, sends it in off her backhand. Seven and a half to go here in the third period. Minnesota trying to make the PWHL playoffs, but they are in danger of dropping their fifth straight game in regulation. Here's Cunning right in front, and a chance as the puck was loose momentarily. Cunning gets it back. Gets it across for Fleming. Puck goes around the boards, picked up by Bourbonnet. Sophie Jakes tried to send it down low, nobody home, and Brooke Hobson chips it out. Near Steck line. In with speed, has Panic with her. Panic sends one on net, deflected on the way, and Jesse Eldridge tries to send it out. Bookbinder able to hold for Minnesota. Natalie Bookbinder, the New York native, playing in her home state here today. Zumwinkle rings it around the boards as Kelly Panic and Krizova are both there for Minnesota. Krizova comes away with it for Panic. Panic tried the short side, nothing there. Blocked on the way. Another shot blocked, and Eldridge chips it off the boards. Eldridge with the block. Another great defensive gem by New York. Howie Draper told us 
Even though they're out of it, he still would like to see his team finish strong and show signs of continuing to build in the right direction. With a couple of the players, if there was any doubt as to whether or not either a one-year was going to get signed or a two-year, three-year potentially getting moved. One of the uh, reasons why there is a PWHL in the first place is that shot finds traffic. Coin Schofield gave birth to her son Drew in July, just days after the PWHL was officially announced. An integral part of the negotiations and the development of the CBA. Coin Schofield shot right there, sailed through the crease. And she's said to me in some conversations we've had that it's not just about her, you know, and that's what's great is, is she wants to play professional hockey. She wanted it to be a truly professional league, but she knows that it's not even about her or her longtime teammates her same age. It's more about the future and giving young girls out there an option for professional hockey after college. You think about some of the early pioneers in the women's game, players who played the game through the 80s and the 90s when there weren't a lot of women playing at the higher levels and where this has come to and so many people responsible for so many of these great things happening, whether it be on the financial side, whether it be on the athletic side, coaches who've invested, grassroots programs to help grow, not only just grow the game, but grow the women's game as well. Shepard gains his own for Minnesota. Time winding down. And you wonder how aggressive Ken Klee will be in Poli Hensley. Four minutes to go here and a three goal lead for New York. Power play coming oh, up. No. Our play of the game is brought to you by Athletic Brewing Company. Jamie Bourbonnet, not one but two goals. Stuck that one inside the left post on a quick delivery to the net. Here's another one. Don't play with it, just let it go. And this one off the far post, so love it. The left post for Jamie Verbenay today. Two goals and another great game out of her. No doubt we'll be seeing her back next year, if not with New York, somewhere else. She is one of the premier defenders in this league. Zumwinkle. Up for Jakes. Taylor Heisey back for Jakes, Minnesota. Trying to get something going here on the power play. Heisey for Jakes, winds up and it's blocked again. Jakes another try. Hit traffic in front. Such has been the story all afternoon it seems for Minnesota. Kayla Vespa comes away shorthanded. Has the bell streaking toward the net into the glove of Hensley. Vesper, the little spark plug, sparks a rush up ice, and, and Jamie, you are 100% right. It really seems like every time that Minnesota's had a real good chance in the net, a shot's been blocked. That one might have hit one of their own teammates, but it is amazing how New York has owned the shot lanes in their own zone. New York wins the faceoff. Battling shorthanded here. Already one shorty today, but it was scored by Minnesota. Grace Zumwinkle. Minnesota, with time winding down, will have to await its fate. Krizova, fanned on the shot attempt, gets it back. Tried the short side again, fought off by post. It appears Minnesota will go on to lose this game in regulation, barring something miraculous. And if so, they will be all eyes on Boston's effort later today. Actually, puck drop just a few minutes away in that one. And again, tomorrow night in Ottawa. Or I think in Toronto, actually, as Ottawa will play its game there. Heisey tries to drive toward the net. Had it taken away by Hobson. 12 seconds to go on the advantage. And what a season it's been. With time winding down on our own time here. We've been blown away by the success of this league and the response from so many of the fans. 
Sophia Cunnan tries one last shot, sealed off by Post. Also want to give a shout out to Raycom Sports, Rob Reichley at the helm with Bill Stafford, Kelly Bowen, Jenny Iller, and certainly our wonderful producer, Andy Bach, who's been here almost the entire way with us in New York. Amanda Smurge as well, directing. It's a true team effort, and it's been an honor to just be a part of it. Obviously, thanks to all the coaches who've been tremendous with their time and their insights, and, and every year, Jamie, around World Junior time, when we broadcast out of the offices in Secaucus, I tend to move <laughs> into yours and That's barge right. my way in and share it for a couple of weeks. So it's been nice to share the broadcast booth with you as well. Thank you. An honor and a privilege. And to all of you who have tuned in, whether it be YouTube or certainly our regional networks here, MSG Network, Valley Sports North in Minnesota, and across all of the different Canadian platforms as well. We've been blown away by the response, the reception, and we can't wait for next year. Sophie Jakes, one final try here as we have 30 seconds to go. New York looking to end its season on a high note. Levis rips a shot turned aside by Hensley. Howie Draper. Even some of the players that haven't seen a ton of ice time, he's giving them the final minute here. And the home crowd coming to life for this team. New York will look to be better next year. And for everybody else, we will wait with anticipation to see who's going to be in the playoffs. Like, it's amazing to think of Minnesota will go home tonight. They'll see what Boston does this afternoon. Then you get the Ottawa chip to fall tomorrow. Dust will not settle until late Sunday night as to who plays whom and who's even in. The horn sounds on the inaugural season for PWHL New York. It's a victory for the home team. Putting up a five spot against Minnesota.